Okay, let's talk a little bit about making a 9mm AR. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the parts that go into a 9mm AR build, and I'm not really going to specifically do a, a build video at this point. There's a lot of guides for that online. Um, I've done a couple uh, specific videos, uh, specifically, you know, how to put on a handguard, where I actually installed this handguard. So I am going to show some clips of that as I explain some of these parts. But I want to basically just discuss those of you that want to build a 9mm AR or maybe you want to convert one of the rifles that you have to 9mm, uh, one of the, some of the things you're going to have to consider. So first off, let's go ahead and kind of start from the bottom up. Let's take apart this lower. And we're going to look at first the lower receiver and specifically what's important with the lower receiver in building a 9mm. Now you'll notice I've got a C Products 9mm magazine here and as you can tell compared to a standard 223 AR-15 magazine this is a lot narrower. So when you go to choose your lower receiver there's a couple options one you can get a lower receiver designed to work with nine millimeter and what that'll do is it'll actually have a smaller magazine well designed to use the C products magazines are actually based on the Colt metal form style magazines which are really a converted Uzi magazine so if you see Colt, C Products, or Uzi magazines, they're essentially the same. The difference with the Uzi magazines is they don't have a cutout on the side for the bolt catch, so they are a little bit different. So you have those style, the Colt, the metal form, that general pattern. Another option are some of the newer lowers that are actually designed to take a Glock magazine. Um, those weren't as common when I built this, but if you shoot a 9mm Glock handgun, that could definitely be a, a big benefit as you could swap magazines with your uh, handgun rounds. So either the, the 15, the 17, or even the higher capacity um, 30 round Glock magazines. So you can get your lower actually made to handle those 9mm magazines. The one disadvantage of that is the fact that then that's all they can handle are those. The other option, and the one that I went with, is a magazine block. So if you pull this out, you can actually see it's basically a spacer. It's a piece of metal that went in and fills the space from a regular magazine that the 9mm needs the smaller hole you can see through it there in order to use the 9mm magazine you'll also notice that it has its own feed ramps on here and it has its own ejector to work with the 9mm now advantage and disadvantage of this uh, disadvantage obviously it's another piece it has to go into the magazine well and it has to be in there in order for the rifle to function. Uh, you can have some fitting issues, uh, specifically like with this one, you can see that I've actually uh, filed down a number of places, that's what the shiny areas are. Um, this one was actually free to me, so it didn't cost me anything, but it was given to me by somebody that was having, or that actually had two of them for a build they did. I'm kind of seeing after I got it why they chose not to use it. I actually had to do quite a bit of filing to get the magazines to fit properly and to get the magazine well adapter itself to actually fit into the magazine well of my AR lowers. So it took me a little bit of time to work to get them to fit. Once I finally got it, took my time, made those adjustments slowly. It does actually work very well now. So. 
that's one thing to consider with the magazine block is sometimes you have fitment issues. I would definitely look at one that has adjustments and um, ways to adjust that fit. I know the Spikes Tactical one had a lot of pretty much everything was adjustable. You could adjust the way the extractor fit and that would definitely make it easier to convert. One of the big advantages, you can see the way that this pistol is built. It is built as a 9mm pistol with the short barrel. Um, if I want to use different caliber uppers on this pistol, or if at some point I go through the uh, Form 1 process and register it as a short barreled rifle, I can swap uppers and shoot a 223, a 300 blackout, a 68 SPC, um, you know, even something like a 458 SOCOM if I chose, because the lower, once this magwell is removed, the lower works just the same as any other lower. That is one of the biggest reasons I chose to go with just the mag block, is I wanted to be able to use uh, not only the 9mm that I built it for, but I wanted to be able to put other uppers on it if I choose to at some point register it as a short build rifle. So that's kind of your first consideration. How do you want your mags to fit? You either get a dedicated lower for 9mm magazines, or do you go with a mag block? Uh, the next big consideration on the lower is your hammer, and we'll talk a little bit about that more when we get to the bolt, but for your standard hammer, the standard style hammers have a notch in the back. The way a lot of the 9mm bolts are designed, you can't use that notched hammer. It could cause feeding issues, the bolt could bind up, um, it could ultimately break your hammer. It can cause issues. So you have to get a ramped bolt if you want to use a hammer with a notch. If you don't want to use the hammer with the notch, if you get a specific hammer that does not have that notch, then it's not as big of a concern. You can go ahead and use uh, any 9mm bolt. So let's go ahead and put this magwell back in. One of the other things to consider is your buffer. Here, I actually went with, a, this is a Yankee Hill 9mm buffer. So, this is actually longer and heavier than a standard buffer. And what that does is the extra weight helps with the blowback action. So there's a little more weight for the action to recoil against. The added advantage of the length is when this travels towards the back of the tube, as it's coming back, it can't go quite as far as your standard AR buffer would go. That means your bolt isn't coming back quite as far. And when your bolt doesn't come back quite as far, it reduces the chances of 9mm brass coming back and follow, falling inside your fire control groups. Uh, that is a complaint I've heard with some people, not everybody, but some people that run a standard 223 size buffer and no spacer or anything like that. So having a either a longer buffer like this or again, Spikes Tactical uh, offer a, a spacer that goes in the back that keeps the buffer from traveling quite as far. Uh, that's another option. Is that required? No, you, your nine millimeter can still function without a long buffer or the spacer, but you may have brass that falls back inside the fire control group area of the two two or of your lower receiver, which then will cause feeding problems, or it can actually cause the entire gun to lock up until you get that piece of brass pulled out. And let's take a look at the upper. So, upper receiver itself, you can get a 9mm upper receiver. A lot of those will have a case deflector that sticks up a little bit further and a smaller ejection port. With that smaller ejection port, they also tend to have this ejection port cover is also smaller to fit. Um, is that necessary? No, it's not necessary. As you can see, I actually have just a standard 223 upper. Again, at the time I bought this rifle, the parts for it, and I was building it, you know, the AR-15 parts were extremely hard to come by at that point. So just finding an upper receiver, I decided that I would go with it. 
Um, I have not had any function problems at all. It works 100%. So if you want the more correct look of say the original Colt 9mm AR-15s, you know, go ahead and get either an, a 9mm upper receiver or you can actually, I could buy the cartridge case deflector and the shortened cartridge case cover or ejection port cover and I could add them onto here and get that look. So if that's part of what you want, then you can go ahead and add that. And now the bolt itself. What you'll notice is the 9mm bolt is a one-piece bolt. It's not a bolt and separate carrier like you have with the 223 and the majority of other AR-15 uh, alternative calibers. It's one piece. You'll also notice there is no hole for the gas system as the 9mm um, the majority of the 9mm ARs are a blowback action. The actual cartridge case and the pressure from expanding will push the bolt back. There is no gas. Now there are a few exceptions to that for some of the specific 9mm and if you get into those then you'll use the actual gas system. But as a general rule the majority of them are are not gas operated they're operated by blowback. Um, you'll also notice here because of that blow blowback there is a solid weight inside this carrier. This carrier and this bolt is a lot heavier than your standard AR carrier. You also have your ramped. This bolt is ramped so that it can be used with any hammer. So that's your 9mm bolt. You do have to have that specific bolt for 9mm in order to use it. You, it's not something you can use a standard AR-15 carrier and then just a 9mm bolt head. It, you have to have this specific bolt and carrier built into one item. Now your charging handle is the same. There's nothing special about that. Now your barrel. Obviously your barrel is a 9mm barrel. That's the main thing that's different. There is no gas tube hole. There's no hole for the gas to escape because again that's not needed in the majority of your 9mm conversions. What that also means when you install your your free float handguard is you don't have a hole you don't have to line up a hole on your barrel nut with the receiver. Now I found with some handguards like this one you may be better off doing that because this Yankee Hill handguard does have a couple bolts on the side and those screws go in and they have to actually go into the little notches in the barrel nut in order to get the handguard to time correctly with the top rail. So if you don't pay attention to one of the holes in the barrel nut lining up with where the hole in the receiver would be, then your handguard might not time properly. So that's something to pay attention to depending on your handguard. Does it need a time? So you may still want to line up that hole. So for the muzzle threading, when I bought this barrel, the standard was typically a half by 36 inch threads. So the disadvantage of that is it was definitely harder to find a good muzzle device in half by 36. But a lot of the half by 36 muzzle devices are designed for either the 9mm or the 6.5 Grendel. A lot of the barrels now, or the more common option, seems to be the half by 28 inch barrel threading. Uh, that's a lot easier to find. There's a lot more options for that, including a lot of the suppressors now for 9mm are easier to find in a half by 28 inch thread than half by 36. But the disadvantage of that is a lot of those muzzle devices that are available are for 223 pattern ARs and uh, other rifles designed for 223. So when you do your muzzle device for a 9mm, you have to make sure that whatever muzzle device you pick, you know, flash hider, muzzle brake, compensator, suppressor, that it has a half by uh, 28 thread 
with a 9 millimeter bore opening. Uh, just for example, if this was a half by 28 thread, I could put the muzzle brake from my Omega suppressor on it. I could even put my uh, 22 caliber suppressor direct thread onto a half by 28 thread. But obviously, shooting a 9 millimeter bullet out of my half by 28 inch suppressor is going to be a catastrophic problem. So, those are some of the basic uh, things to know when you go to build a 9 millimeter. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more things that I could have gotten into. Uh, possibly, if there's a, you know, based on the comments, if there's more info that you guys want, I can either try to answer the questions in the comments or I can even try to do follow up video uh, if you have those questions. But just a real quick recap. You're going to have to look at your lower. Do you want either a dedicated lower or do you want to do a mag block like I did? Your hammer. Make sure you stay away from a notched hammer unless your bolt is ramped. Your bolt. Is it ramped or is it not ramped? But either way, you got to make sure you use a 9mm bolt and uh, preferably ramped. I would say it's going to be easier for you if you just get it ramped or buy one with a ramped barrel. Uh, and then your barrel itself. So the, the specific parts to a 9mm that have to be 9mm specific are your lower receiver or your mag block, your bolt, your barrel, and your magazines. Most of the other parts are going to be the same. Uh, the only exception is you know, the hammer depending on what kind of bolt you go with. Your, your upper receiver, your handguard, your sights, your charging handle, um, your trigger assembly, can all be the same, your grip, your buttstock, um, all of that can be the same. You may want to choose a different weight buffer, that's kind of a personal preference, a lot of guys, but you will generally need one on the heavier side. 